love guns. I don't necessarily like guns. I'm a city girl, more comfortable in high heels than boots. And although I had a pet pig for 20 years, that's Wilbur right there, and worked in a dairy as a kid, I own guns, long guns, handguns. I own guns because it's my right. It's not a right anyone in Washington gave me. It's a natural right, confirmed by the very people who founded this nation. It's a right that no one is going to take away from me. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. This week, the debate continues, the rhetoric more heated, as parents in Newtown testify about innocent children taken from them, as sheriffs across this country threaten the arrest of any federal agent who would enforce unconstitutional gun laws, as police chiefs support the ban on assault rifles, politicians threaten gun manufacturers and the very banks that fund them, and as gun associations sue to protect their guns, the cacophony of voices louder and louder, at times drowning out the very issue upon which we all agree, stopping the senseless slaughter of innocents. The president wants to ban assault rifles. He wants to limit high capacity magazines, do background checks and close gun show loopholes. The truth? Banning weapons to prevent crime doesn't work. Nowhere is that point more evident, Mr. President, than in your hometown, Chicago, where in spite of the ban on handguns, more people were murdered in the last decade than the number of Americans killed in Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is a war zone. Last month in your home city, with one of the toughest gun laws in the nation, 42 people, including that 15-year-old majorette who performed at your inauguration, were murdered. And of the 4,265 murdered in Chicago in the last decade, less than 1% of them were killed with a long gun. So I guess that handgun ban isn't working out so well. The bottom line, criminals get guns. Law-abiding citizens get killed. Why would you give the criminals an advantage over an unarmed citizenry? Hell, why not just post a map like the Journal News did and identify where people without guns live? And Rahm Emanuel, another member of that Chicago outfit, has the chutzpah to threaten banks that fund the gun industry job and then direct that pensions be divested of their money in this industry. You say that Chicago is leading the effort to keep communities safe? Rahm Emanuel, what standing do you have to lead any anti-gun initiative? Your city is the murder capital of America. Leading the way? Where are you going to lead them to? You want to stop law-abiding citizens from owning guns while at the same time the Obama administration was sending free assault rifles to the Mexican drug cartels that they then used to kill us. And here in New York, mandatory jail time if you're arrested with a loaded gun. Loaded illegal gun. Sounds good. The problem? Fewer than half of those arrested for illegal possession of loaded handguns even received a state prison sentence. Mandatory, all right unless the judge doesn't think they are. You could drive an 18-wheeler through that old interest of justice excuse to not jail someone. And now the president wants to have a dialogue on mental illness. We know the Virginia Tech shooter, the Colorado movie theater shooter, the Gabby Gifford shooter, each had serious mental problems or were declared to be dangerous. Even the Newtown shooter who would play video games Violent video day, games for days on end had mental problems. But it's interesting that the president mentioned nothing about violent images and video games. So if we ban assault rifles, then shouldn't we ban the images of assault rifles in movies and video games? What's that, you say? The First Amendment protects free speech? Of course it does. And the Second Amendment protects my right to bear arms. Neither trump the other. And by the way, what's with this proposed mental illness database? Who should be in it? The mentally ill? The mentally defective? 
those with a criminal record, those likely to engage in crime, those involuntarily committed, the ones on psychotropic drugs. Here's one for you. Many states don't even report felony convictions to the federal NCIS database, let alone report mental health data. And oh, I don't want to forget HIPAA. Our healthcare system is so locked down, my own mother's doctor won't even tell me how she's doing. So what do we do? I'll tell you. We need to prosecute gun crime. We need to confine the dangerously mentally ill where they're shooting people, killing them, killing them with cars, or pushing them onto subway tracks. I have fought for civil confinement of the dangerously mentally ill. Now, I didn't say mentally ill. I didn't say homeless. The Supreme Court of the United States has said that civil confinement of the dangerously mental ill is constitutional. Kansas versus Hendricks. Go look it up. I've been in the trenches for decades. I've seen what criminals can do. The pain of those affected by those massacres is palpable to all of us. But law-abiding gun owners did not pull those triggers. The Founding Fathers were forward-thinking enough to say we have the right to bear our arms. They didn't say a musket or a rifle with a bayonet. They said arms. I have a natural, God-given right. I don't have to explain whether I'm hunting deer or defending myself. Who should say that I can only defend myself with a certain number of bullets? Should I empty my clip and just wait for the end? I have the right to protect my family and myself. I don't love guns, but one day I know I may need them.